In this video, we will demonstrate the use of an anterior apical mesh fixation repair using the Uphold Light System and the Capio Slim Suture Capturing Device made by Boston Scientific. This 65-year-old patient presented with post-hysterectomy vault prolapse. After careful counseling, this patient opted for an augmented repair and considered both abdominal and vaginal approaches. She subsequently selected a transvaginal option. The Uphold Light Vaginal Support System will be used. It is designed to achieve a level 1 mesh augmented repair through a single small anterior vaginal incision. Hydrodissection is followed by a horizontal or midline incision. Here I made a horizontal incision at the level of the bladder neck followed by dissection of the vesicovaginal space in the standard fashion. The left index finger is used in this case to guide the thickness of dissection and to monitor for appropriate thickness of the vaginal skin flap. Retraction of the bladder and upper skin edge allows for visual identification of the appropriate plane. Note my use of Alice clamps, marching sequentially up the repair, thereby tractioning on the defect and minimizing the need for deep retractors for internal surgery. Further dissection is carried out laterally. I accomplish this by gentle spreading with the Metzenbaum scissors, followed by finger dissection along the obturator muscle on the patient's left. I sweep my finger, maintaining firm lateral sidewall pressure against the obturator internus muscle in a downward and medial motion, cleaning off the sidewall and creating a smooth tunnel toward the ischial spine on the patient's left side. I tend to not widely dissect the paravaginal space, but rather create just enough space for entry of the capio suturing device and the operating finger. Once the ischial spines are located through this anterior approach, the sacrospinous ligament is palpated by gently sweeping the index finger medially from the ischial spine to ensure the ligament is clear of tissue. I locate the midpoint of the sacrospinous with my finger. Contralateral dissection is completed. Engage the dart into the carrier by gently pulling down on the lead. Ensure that the tip of the dart is completely pulled into the carrier by slightly depressing the Capio Slim device driver button. I then position the Capio device on the sacrospinous ligament between my index finger and the ischial spine. Just before firing the Capio Slim device, I reposition my left index finger on top of the Capio device head to prevent any accidental shifting of its position during deployment of the Capio dart. Once securely positioned, I depress the Capio driver button with my right thumb until it is fully depressed. Release, and if needed, pull the driver button back to allow the carrier to retract into the housing. This will drive the dart through the ligament and into the catch of the Capio device. Withdraw the Capio device, bringing the mesh assembly along. Once the mesh leg leader can be grasped, disconnect it from the Capio device and confirm positioning on the sacrospinous ligament. We now repeat the process on the patient's right side. Now both legs are in place. Remember that keeping the sleeve intact may facilitate the device repositioning in the occasional case where the pass is not optimal. If desired, plicate the bladder fascia with absorbable sutures in standard fashion. In this case, a central cystocele was identified. Two separate 2O vicral vertical mattress sutures are used to decompress or reduce the size of the anterior compartment. This will promote full coverage of the mesh across the entire anterior compartment. At this point, I prefer to position the mesh closer to the apical portion of the repair. This enables the mesh to be affixed to the paracervical ring or vaginal apex if desired.
Typically, I accomplish this with three absorbable sutures. I begin by placing one suture tie at the natural center line, 12 o'clock position, to the center of the apex or right into the firm cervical stroma when present. I repeat for the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock positions. The idea is to recreate the paracervical ring with this tapered portion of the mesh. To pull the mesh into the incision, activate the leg assemblies by pulling outwards. I often digitally elevate the cervix and vaginal apex to the level of the ischial spines, relieving tension on the apex as the arms are deployed. Take care not to over-tighten the mesh. Final adjustment is determined visually and also by palpation, as you will feel the mesh arms supporting the vaginal apex symmetrically to a level at or near the ischial spines. By palpation, the apical mesh arms feel very similar to supportive apical ligaments. When making the final adjustments, you may want to allow for a bit of additional tightening that can occur during leg assembly removal. This animation shows an internal view of the mesh assembly during final adjustment, pulling the vagina back into its desired position. Notice that the mesh covers level 1 defects and also the susceptible areas of level 2 vaginal support. The superior edge of the mesh may now be tacked with simple absorbable sutures placed to the right and left side of midline. This enables the mesh coverage to extend up to the highest portion or most superior portion of the cystocele and may prevent shifting of that edge during the healing process. To remove the leg assemblies, cut the two leader loop sutures which are located outside of the protective sleeve and gently pull the leg assembly to remove, leaving only the mesh in place. I find that it is easier to gradually tease the plastic sleeve off with intermittent tugs or pressure versus one solid tug. Repeat these steps with the other leg assembly. Once the mesh placement is complete, the length of the vagina should be restored with full longitudinal coverage to the apex. I occasionally resect a redundant portion of vaginal skin before final closure. The goal is to leave adequate laxity of the anterior vaginal wall, but to avoid excessive redundancy. The vagina may be closed with a running absorbable stitch and the vagina packed until the following day. At the surgeon's discretion, a sling procedure may be performed after the mesh placement through a separate midurethral incision, providing independent tensioning of the sling and ensuring its midurethral placement. This particular patient did undergo a retropubic midurethral sling for stress incontinence and a posterior perineurophy to improve her vaginal tone. With the introduction of the Uphold Light Vaginal Support System, this procedure has evolved into an intravaginal, single incision procedure that enables mesh adjustability and the use of a lightweight, low surface area mesh for treating apical and anterior prolapse. At our center, the technique has been associated with highly favorable outcomes in both the anterior and apical compartments.
POPQ staging reveals encouraging outcomes for not only C and D points, but also for the anterior vaginal compartment outcomes. Subjective quality of life and surgical satisfaction results have also been compiled and have been highly favorable.